Is the Creative Raw 2 simply a milking of an already successful product line or an improvement over iteration number one? Let's find out. One, two, three, fuck it. Creative's original raw speaker was renowned for its portability, sound quality and impressive volume performance, whether that be for casual listening on your own or to fill a room or like a kind of the ground floor of a house. And this speaker definitely delivers on the expectations pre-concocted by iteration number one. It's 20% smaller, it uses the same speakers inside but uses a different amplifier system and brings some new technology to the table. So let's kick it off with a really quick physical overview. Now you can get this in either a black or white colour scheme, this kind of black comes with this like grey gold type of grain colour on the top which kind of reminds me of Bose's QC20 and 35 headphone colour schemes. It's a really nice colour scheme, it's quite high end and quite up market reflecting the price tag off this unit. This unit does come in around £150, uh, so nearer to the $200 mark than the $100 price point. On the front we of course have our big speaker mesh. We also have a Bluetooth pairing slash telephone button. You can take and receive calls on this unit and it enables a Bluetooth connectivity. You've also got a volume up and down as well as a power button. We also have an indicator for battery life and sound quality and that kind of thing. We have an NSC, NFC tag, sorry, so you can bump your phone against this if it supports NFC for super quick Bluetooth pairing and also a record LED indicator. Now to say that the top of this uh, portable speaker, this portable Bluetooth speaker is well equipped would be an understatement. We've got a 2 amp USB output which is going to be able to charge at your phone and that kind of thing. We've also got a micro USB port uh, for like charging and that kind of thing. We've also got a micro SD card slot. This is uh, capable of being used as an MP3 player as well as an auxiliary input if you don't want to use Bluetooth and also a 15 volt power input for charging this device. Uh, your charging is going to be through this 15 volt uh, DC input mainly so you are going to uh, kind of accept the move away from USB and that's purely because of the power inside this device. We also have a record button, a next track button as well as a microphone mute button. The, the record functionality on this is really quite a, really quite weird for a speaker actually. We've also got playback controls, next track, previous track, looping, skipping and this is all for the MP3 player. Uh, do remember you can't use that functionality over Bluetooth unfortunately and that's more a restriction of the Bluetooth to standard as opposed to creatives kind of implementation. We also have a raw and terror base button. If you uh, hold this button in once it turns on terror base which increases the low end making this thing much more bassy and if you press it again it, it turns on raw which the whole idea is to fill a room and you'll be able to hear that now. <laughs> We also have a switch which allows us to go between USB audio and mass storage, which that USB port is, of course, for. You can charge a device off this, but it is uh, kind of made, if you will, uh, for using the USB stick with songs and stuff on like that. On the side, we have our two base ports. These are going to vibrate like mad when you've got this thing all the way cranked up. And on the back, we actually have two uh, rubbery uh, feet strips as well as all of our certifications. These feet strips actually allow you to place uh, the unit like this with the speakers firing up. Now, obviously, for sound quality, this probably isn't going to, for the audio files out there is not going to aid sound quality too much but it really fills a room and especially for speakers close to you if you have it up where it's bouncing off walls and ceilings it definitely uh, is a less sharp sound. Uh, if you've got on the bottom or the side depending on your orientation and where you where you put it down you've got a creative logo. It would have been nice to see some feet down here some rubber strips like on the back if you do want to place it down because it can get a bit uh, kind of dirty and scratched up on the bottom but I, I suppose uh, they didn't go with those because it kind of dirty up the aesthetic I suppose if you will. But how does this thing sound, the bass input performance on this is incredible and that's partly down to the dual amplifiers. We actually have dual amplifiers, uh, so we've got one amplifier for the low and the mid tones and one for the high. Uh, otherwise what happens is with, with a lot of speakers, especially with the lower end amplifiers and the smaller ones that they have to put in speakers like this, is that the low ends distort the high end and it will just, yeah. Now whether this is somewhat of a gimmick or good 
it's for you to decide, but I definitely saw a sound quality improvement, which has to be a good thing, whether it's just a bit more of a marketing ploy than it is kind of functional, who knows, but Creative certainly know what they're doing with this unit. We've got three uh, kind of speakers, if you will, uh, in the front of this unit to provide stereo sound as well. Two smaller and one bigger, obviously, for the bass and the mids. Uh, now, these bass ports on the side are also really, really effective, and the design is is phenomenal on these. I mean, you can just see it here with me talking right now. The creative logo is really nicely on here. The way that the light kind of reflects off these is really, really nice. And this thing just gives such a premium finish. You could shove this on your bookshelf in your living room. You could shove this by your TV and it's not gonna look out of place. It looks really, really nice. As for the white one, I think the white one looks really good, but I have this color on hand, so I can't really rate that one. Overall, this is a really, really impressive speaker. It comes in at a decent price point as well, not too expensive, but it is on the slightly higher end. Uh, if you did want something a bit smaller that's more waterproof, I had a review up yesterday, which will be on this side uh, of Anchor's waterproof speaker. But if you want something more high end and something that ultimately sounds quite a bit better, then this is the one for you. It's got quite a bit of weight to it. It is 20% smaller than the previous iteration and to conclude the point I made at the beginning of this video, this is certainly an improvement over the first version from Creative and not just them milking an already successful product line and by that I mean mm, it's done really well the first one, we'll just release a version two and a half hours it. They didn't do that, they did a good job, nice work Creative, great speaker. I'll leave Amazon links for the UK and US as always in the description below. If you've got any questions feel free to hit me up on the comments and if it gets a bit crowded over there head over to Twitter at Geekwot and make sure to drop me a follow. But as always if you did enjoy this video you know what to do and I'll see you in the next Geekwot video.